Hello Year 11. We've been looking at descriptive writing in these series of lessons. This is lesson four in the series of five. And so far we've been looking at figurative imagery, simile, metaphor and personification. But today is all about change. Change in perspective, change in viewpoint and change away from imagery to looking at adjectives. Sometimes adjectives can become boring. Too many people use them to describe one word here and one word there. But if you list your adjectives together, you put them into an adjectival string, they can actually have a lot of power. So we're going to be looking at how we can string adjectives together in a list in today's session. You'll need your copy of this image together with all the notes you've made so far. Be ready to add more notes and planning for the adjectives of today's lesson. So this time we're going to be looking at the change in direction. To recap, so far we've looked at the big picture, thinking about the character of a place and the overall mood. Then we focused on one area. Some of you chose the tents, some of you looked at the trees. Then we zoomed in to one detail, looking at very small movements, looking really closely at description, thinking carefully about how we might convert that using metaphors. This time there's a change. Now I want to imagine that whatever direction you've been looking at for your detail, something distracts you and you turn around. You're looking in completely the opposite direction. You can choose something just out of shot. You don't have to describe everything in the scene, but look at something that might be quite realistic outside of the scene. There might be a farm nearby, or there may be some teenagers playing with water, having a water fight. Or you could decide to change completely and look at a different time, a time when it wasn't quiet and still, a time when it wasn't quite as sunny, a time when the tents weren't even there. It doesn't matter what you do as long as you change, okay? And if we track through our structure, you can see that we're no longer zooming in, but we're looking at a large area again. So your change can be the entire scene if you want to, or it could just be one area, either in the present or the past, or if you wanted to be really clever, you could even look at what it might look like in the future. So let's remind ourselves then what an adjective is. It's often called a describing word. It can describe lots of things, but normally it describes a noun. Adjectives can even describe other adjectives when you list them. A noun is a pop a person, an object or a place. So we're looking at words that are going to provide us with more detail about the place that we're in or a person that might be in this place or an object you might see lying around within the campsite. Again, it's completely up to you what you want to choose because you're the author and you can make your own authorial choices. So here's an example. I've imagined that I was looking at the girl and she's walking around in the previous paragraph and I've turned around and I've seen the signpost for the first time. So I'm literally basing this in the present, seeing what I can see right here and now. Okay. So the example is the signpost was tall, wooden and alert. So there's your string of adjectives. Tall, one, wooden, two, alert, three. And it's always good to put things in three because it creates power in a direction. This is what I mean. Have a look at the box at the bottom. An adjective can literally describe something or it can figuratively describe something, such as the word alert. It gradually builds details and has a direction. When you list adjectives like this, they are called a string of adjectives. So let's pull this apart a little bit more. The signpost is literally tall. So we've said something about its height. It's literally made of wood. So we've said something about describing the substance it's made of, but it's figuratively alert. Can you see we've used some personification there? We've given it a human characteristic, pretended that it's got a mind and it's alert and looking around. Okay. So can you see you've got literal, literal, figurative. It gets good, better and best. And what you want to aim to do is to leave your best idea until last. That gives it direction. So you can just go free here. You'll be completely wild. Take risks. Use your adjectives, but be imaginative about it. See if you can be inventive. Think out of the box. Describe things in a really interesting, insightful way. 
So just like we were looking at the random noun generator, if you go onto that same site, you can also generate some adjectives. And what you're going to do is to try to create some simple but clear strings of adjectives to describe the tense. So here are some of the words that I chose, or not chose, I was given them when I went onto this random word generator. So I had billowing, which means really big and blowy, boiling, little, tangible, something you can touch, watery, befitting, which means something is suitable or it fits that place, that context, purple, sophisticated, which means quite formal, posh, um, exuberant, looking at something in its bubbly and full of energy, robust, meaning strong, dramatic and expensive. So there are quite a few words there and I'm just going to pick some that I think might work for me. So what I'm going to do is to take the tense and I'm going to describe them using some of these adjectives which I'm going to layer up together in a group of three so they'll form a string to say something good, better and best about these tents. So I've gone a little bit off piste here, look, I've taken the adjectives billowing and boiling and I thought, oh, they both start with B. I wonder if I can find another B word which makes it sound like it's moving about, billowing, boiling, they're quite active adjectives, aren't they? And so I thought, what can I make it seem like it's moving and rippling? I know, I'll go for bubbling. And on top of that, I've sort of killed two birds in one stone. I've noticed these words all start with the same letter. And I've noticed that alliteration helps people to read things clearly. It sort of rolls off the tongue, billowing, boiling, bubbling. You can't help it. It's fun to read, isn't it? But it also helps it to be memorable and creates a clearer picture in the mind of the readers. So I thought, right, I'll use these B words. Let's see how that played out in this sentence then. The tent was billowing, bubbling, boiling until a teenage boy emerged from the zipped flap. Now it's not literally that the tent was billowing, getting wider and smaller and being filled with air and the wind blowing around inside, but because the teenage boy might be getting up, he's banging his head on the roof, his arms are stretching out as he's getting out of his sleeping bag, it gives the impression that the sides and the top of the tent are moving about. Bubbling, if you imagine bubbles, you get a movement here, a movement there. It's quite sporadic, isn't it? It's bubbling all over the place. You think of water bubbling in a pan on a stove. It doesn't just happen in one place. Perhaps this teenage boy is trying to find his hairbrush. Perhaps he's looking for his phone. He might be a bit cold. He's trying to get his hoodie on. So it creates all sorts of movements in this tent. And boiling then helps to reinforce that idea of bubbling. So you get billowing, moving out bubbling occurring in lots of different places and boiling the temperature is getting hotter and hotter and hotter until that teenage boy emerged from the zipped flap so it moves in a direction until a grand crescendo a big movement and then we see the outcome of that is in this case that the teenage boy emerged so this is what you're going to work on in a moment you're going to choose one area or one detail is going to be in a completely different opposite direction for the one you've chosen. We've said that it doesn't have to be in the picture, but it could be something that's quite fitting just out of the shot, something that's occurred that would be typical for a campsite. It doesn't have to be the present. You can do a flashback into the past if you want to, but what you want to do is to aim to mind map five of your adjectives that move from good, better to really exciting and then you can choose the best three words from your list of five, okay? So this is what it might look like. You're going to use an adjectival string to describe a detail or one area in the opposite direction. This is your change paragraph. Abruptly, that means all of a sudden. Abruptly, she turns. The camp owner has arrived to clean the shower block he rides in the jeep like a king of the ranch, strong, focused and majestic. He swings from the cab and slips into the block, the mop over his shoulder. So if you notice here, this adjectival string is not the only method which has been used in this short description. 
you can see that the camp owner has been described like a king in the ranch. So there's your simile look. So you don't just have to use adjectives in this paragraph. You can also bring in your simile, metaphor and personification skills that you've learned from previous lessons and you can layer them up to make it more exciting and to create a clearer picture for your readers. The way the adjectives have been used here though is first of all he's literally described as strong. So this camp owner is strong as he swings from his cap. Then we can see that there's a focus and that focus this time is on his eyes. So his eyes are really looking where he needs to go, his head's in the zone, he knows he's got to get this shower block clean before everybody on the campsite wakes up. So we're looking at his literal description and then the description of his state of mind. And then finally, the best word, always say the best for last, remember, is majestic. Now majestic is another word for majesty and majesty means king. And what's happened here that's really effective, and you can do it ever so easily, is you can repeat the idea that you've mentioned in a previous sentence in the one you're working on now. So you can say the same things over and over again if you want to. And what happens then is you start to get really clever and you have an extended metaphor. So in the previous sentence, he rides in the Jeep like a king of the ranch. The camp owner is described as a king. And then in this sentence, strong, focus and majestic, he swings from the cab and slips into the block, the mop over his shoulder. He's also described as a king, but we've chosen a different word. Instead of the noun king, we've now looked at the adjective majestic. So it all ties up nice and neatly and helps your reader to be able to follow your line of description as you're going through. Now see if you can do that, try and develop the ideas from sentence to sentence making links and then see if you can use your adjectives good, better and best in your adjectival string. Right, so you're going to choose your focus then, present or past. List your adjectives around the object or the area where the object might appear if it's just off camera and then choose your best three adjectives and layer them in order. You can, in fact, you can even number them in your planning stage. I want to use this one first, this one's better, so I'll go second, and this is the one I really want to be focusing on, and that will help you to give directions. Same as before, between about 50 and 60 words, you're going to write a paragraph, add it to the three paragraphs you've already written, and then be prepared next lesson to write your fifth and final paragraph, and then you can submit the whole description when you're done. Have fun with this one, it's going to be really exciting and I'm looking forward to seeing your work as it develops.